I was too busy worried about the gasket here and I forgot these two O-rings. What a pain in the ass. Don't forget to swap over the O-rings. So today's the day we're gonna install the HKS transmission cooler. Um, I was looking over the instructions. At first I was freaking out, I was like, man, it is all in Japanese, but I realized towards the end, it is actually in English. So that kind of helps us out. But I was going through it. Uh, first step is basically taking the front end apart. And of course, I already did that. And taking the wheel wells uh, liners out. And uh, we're gonna put it in the air. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna organize everything out uh, step by step so that it's easiest for us to install and for you guys to follow along. So first, first of all, we're gonna do uh, organize the hardware, and because my hoist, I don't think it's gonna be the proper hoist. We might need a different hoist. So what I'm gonna do is all the stuff that I can actually access first, which is the uh, washer reservoir. Uh, we're gonna do all that uh, today and see where we go or how far along we can go or we can get and then we'll go from there. To remove the uh, washer fluid reservoir, 10 mil here, 10 mil here, then unplug the water from here and plug the power to the pump from here. I believe this is the sensor, so I'm, I'm gonna unplug that. And 10 mil here. And a clip right here, and it should just snake right out of there. So once you unplug it, you guys, it, uh, all your washer fluid will uh, actually leak out. And uh, yeah, just have a bucket ready. It's just pissing. Still pissing, you guys. It's still going. Damn. Still pissing. Damn. Still pissing. Damn. Still going. There you go, guys. I marked off the holes that we're going to drill for the bracket. Perfect. Pretty dead on you guys. Whatever they give you, the measurements is just dead on. All right, so up next you guys, I'm gonna install the brackets for the cooler core here. And we need to install the insulator and the insulator uh, collars here so that the uh, bolts can go in. So the top bracket has a special cutout for clearance of the uh, bolt and the bottom one has just all circles. That's the top bracket. Just absolutely love it you guys when it's all engineered properly and everything just fits just like as according to plan and according to the instructions, just, just an extra added bonus, you guys. Love it. There you go. I'm gonna button these up. So next up, I'm gonna put the uh, rubber insulators and their collars on the top and bottom. All right, you guys, so up next, we're gonna install the core. Everything so far is actually really good. Awesome fit. So next we're gonna install the lower bracket and it goes in that orientation. And there's two 10 millimeter bolts underneath here that we have to uh, remove from the factory. 
and we're gonna reuse them. Any of you guys that are running a bigger intercooler or a cooler piping that is not factory, it is kind of a little tight, so you guys gotta be careful. I had to remove my coupling here just so that it gets in. So just make sure it doesn't rub and cut through your uh, intercooler piping here, you guys. There we go. So up next, we're gonna prep the inlet uh, scoop and we gotta install the rubber insulator tape here so that uh, it gets a nice tight seal. Don't now we're gonna go install right here. It's gonna be sick, you guys. There we go. So that's much better, you guys. That's the way it's supposed to be. So next we gotta take the factory hose for the, I guess the feed to the reservoir and we're gonna attach it to the uh, supplied rubber hose here. It's pretty easy you guys, it's only held on by a rubber o-ring. So it goes like this, pretty tight. <laughs> Lubricant baby, she's in there. Look at the size difference you guys. Look at that, this thing's massive and look at this, this thing just, just tiny. So, okay, we're gonna install that next. Look at the instructions, you guys. Remove the washer pump from the factory washer tank. Install, remove pump from the washer tank. Man, I don't even know how to remove this. Just worried that's gonna break it, but it is what it is, you guys. So what I did, you guys, I tried removing with my hands and it's just no go. So it goes like that. So what I did was I used this tool, which you can get at your hardware store or up in Canada, Princess Auto. This is to actually remove plugs from the door panels. And I took a good grip on it like this, and it came right out. Easy peasy. All right, so I'm gonna put the rubber grommet back in. Make sure there's no damages on it so it doesn't leak everywhere, you guys. And then let me clip it back in. I was really worried about breaking the motor or the pump, you guys, but yeah, that tool worked really good. So now we're gonna reinstall the factory uh, filler pipe here, but I'm trying to figure out, maybe I should go from the top down or, uh, hmm, like that, not bad. Just in here. Nothing squished. Right, you guys, so what I did was I routed it through here as it's pictured and then up. And it went before the wire harness here. And it goes all up here and it basically clips right back in. That. Perfect, you guys. So I figured out what this rubber rubber band or rubber sheeting is. It's to uh, put around the pipes here. So when you install the clamps, they don't rub into the, the pipes itself. So I'm going to install that right now, you guys. I used a China marker. I marked it off on the exact measurements of what they uh, told us to do. And now I'm going to go ahead and cut the uh, rubber band into the uh, sizes that we need. Six by uh, 55 millimeters and one of them by 90 millimeters. Pretty easy, pretty straightforward, you guys. And the cuts are pretty good. So I did take their advice, I did use the masking tape or electrical tape and uh, pretty easy. So now up next we got to install these collars or these spacers, uh, but to get to it you have to remove all the under panels. So I did that already and the instructions are kind of vague. It says one goes right here and one I think goes right here. Really not much instructions you guys, but I'm just gonna leave that there and we'll go up next to the uh, next step. Next step we'll need pipe number one 
Okay, pipe number two. And we're gonna put some uh, O-rings on that are supplied, but I'm gonna put a little bit of uh, grease on it so that, uh, yeah, just so that it doesn't bind. Nothing like a little bit of lubricant, you guys. So it helps it uh, stay in place too. All right, guys, before we can install the hard pipe, we have to disconnect the, I don't know what this is called, but we gotta disconnect this too. So we finally got it in, you guys. Actually just, because the instructions are so vague, but uh, you just kind of figure your way out and around and it goes in. So what I did with the number one pipe is I entered from the front and above the sway bar and it goes right in you guys. All right, you guys, so I got the collar in and the bracket, the mounting bracket, make sure it bends upwards and it ties into the uh, sway bar bolt here. All right, guys, so just to recap, the front pipe goes here over top of the sway bar and underneath the power steering over the chassis and the back one what I did was I entered I put the back through here first and then push the front through this way and I just had to push some of the bars out of the way just to get it through now we're ready to install these brackets here that goes like that into here and I'm assuming that's where this color comes into play oh my god you guys like it took me forever to get this stupid collar in but apparently here where the bolt goes in the collar goes into a little slot so if you try to shove it in it won't go in there's a little hole with that this whole collar actually seats right into like that so found out the hard way you guys There's, it doesn't tell you in the in instructions all right guys so like I was explaining I sat, I just put the collar just like that and I didn't realize it wasn't clear so I didn't realize that it it actually drops inside there's a hole here it's like that I don't know if the camera can catch it but it drops in now you can see it that's the way it clears so quick note all you guys that are running an aftermarket sway bar this bracket won't fit this bracket so what i did instead of anchoring it here like the instruction says i anchored it over here onto this 10 mil so far so good hopefully when i put the bumper on i'll know if it's going to fit or not but yeah just keep that in mind it won't fit here so next step we'll need these hardware 30 millimeter clamp the nut two or two washers your rubber seal and this will go in here and inside here and these two bolts. Just like that you guys. So I put the nut on top and the bolt on the bottom. Secure this first. And now we're gonna install this one through and secure it to the coupling. And there you go. That's all. I didn't secure everything in yet to make sure everything fits properly and we're going to go over everything. All right, so the next step says that I have to remove the, I think it's the brace here and drill a hole because I have another brace, an aftermarket brace here. Uh, it's going to be kind of a pain in the ass because I have the, uh, uh, the lift in the way here and then my lift kind of sucks. So I'm going to go ahead and I drilled the hole first. I'm going to see if I can snake the last pipe through here and uh, see if I can get away without removing it. All right guys, so here's another angle uh, from the front of the vehicle. That's the brace that you have to take off. They say you can mid pipe off too, but it's a lot of work. So I'm gonna see if I can cheat and uh, remove or install it without removing all that stuff. So that was definitely a tough one. So what I did was you technically you have to remove the brace here. Uh, so what I did was I fed it through this hole first, back this way. And then I fed it in and then I released this a little bit to drop the member, well, not drop this down, but to lift up the drive shaft. Just to give it enough clearance and I got it through. Yeah, saved me a lot of time, you guys. So the bolt size for that, it's a 14 millimeter. And now that I got the O-rings in, I'm gonna go ahead and button them up a little bit and then we'll get to the front section here. So I finally got it done. It was actually extremely hard. But uh, you have to have like really small hands to get in there, you guys. No wonder they did recommend um, 
taking that brace off and pre-assembling it from the outside which is the inside but if you got patience and small hands or able to work around tight spaces you'll save yourself a lot of time right there pretty much the front end is done everything's all buttoned up and it looks just phenomenal you guys everything fits perfectly and now I'm gonna go ahead and start on the back we're gonna take the uh, rear heat shield out there you go heat shields out I had to bend it a little bit just to get it out but it's held on by four 10 mil screws here two here one here and one here done so I took some tin snips well I marked it off first closely to the picture in the instruction booklet and then tin snips and I grinded it down so that basically the holes doesn't rub against it and end up cutting through but there we go we're ready to throw it back in yeah boy so I got I figured it out I managed to basically use a scissor lift to take all the under, under paneling off and the uh, condenser is right there so that's awesome you guys so to answer all those questions of can you use the scissor lift yes you can all right guys so up next we're going to remove the factory heat exchanger here and it's held on by four bolts and i think they're 12s but i'll double check but it looks like it's going to be a really tight space and uh we're gonna see how it goes all right guys so I took the number 10 allen bolt out it's on the side here and as you can see you will lose a little bit of uh, transmission fluid not a whole lot doesn't look like it but yeah you'll lose some and then these bolts here there's four of them and it's a number 12 so I got the factory unit out so what I'm gonna do is transfer the o-ring over and I'm gonna leave it attached here and I'm gonna see if I can actually get it in without taking the actual heat exchanger out and unplugging the hoses. Let's see if it works. So it sits like this on the car and these three bolts were really easy to get to. It was this one right here was the actual hardest one to get to. Took me a little while, but uh, yeah, I got it out. So hopefully going back in is not as easy, hopefully, or easier. All right, so there's the uh, factory unit and the HKS one massive compared to it so obviously there's no o-ring um, slot uh, we're going to take the o-ring off this one and put it back onto this one here and uh, we're going to bolt it all up and hopefully it works you guys so i have to admit i was quite excited to put it back in and i was pretty happy and of course i forgot the o-rings these ones you guys all right guys, so I managed to get all three bolts in, but there's one more at the very top. I got it in, but I haven't, uh, haven't figured out how to uh, tighten it yet. But I put the O-ring in, the heat exchanger here, and I'm gonna clamp it back in, and then I'm gonna figure out how to tighten that one last bolt. I can't get to that bolt, so I'm gonna create myself some clearance. I'm gonna take the uh, exhaust off here. So I took off the rear under tray, and hopefully it works, you guys. Amazing, you guys. Just a little bit of clearance and I got the ratchet in. Now it's all torqued in. Amazing. So up next we're going to install the AN hoses for the back end. But before we can do that, we have to cut these fire hoses down to size. So it says 430 millimeters. So I'm assuming cut it down to this much. There you go guys. So it was pretty tight to get it past the AN fitting here, but once you get past, this slips right on. We're so close to being finished. Man, it's, uh, the back end was actually pretty tiring. Um, some of the bolts just didn't, it was hard to get to you guys. So, so last, uh, we're gonna install the AN fittings here. Uh, the shorter one goes on the inside and the longer one goes on the outside. Damn boy, so I finished it. So I had, what I did was I hand tightened this side first and then because the AN wrench doesn't fit, so I had no choice but to use this one which is a one inch. Tighten this one first and then I did this side. That's the only way because it's hard to, you can't get it in without, yeah, that's what I did first. And then this side, look at how much room I had to play with you guys. I had to hand tighten it. My, with my fingers 
as close as I can and then I use this and look at that my god you guys but whoo got her done that's it got her done I'll tell you guys that install was a bitch um, I don't know what to say if you guys can take that cross member off it would have been a lot easier but I didn't have a choice so hopefully it's easier for you guys all right guys so as you can see I had to take the heat shield off to get the hoses in and I'm gonna reinstall the bracket all right that's it you guys so the heat shield's back in trimmed rounded off and the bracket hoses are in I used the uh, re well, I reused or retained the factory nuts here and uh, same as the one up top here and that's pretty much it all right guys so i'm pretty much done the install i just got to start up the engine let it cycle and then check the oil levels in the transmission and uh that's pretty much it but i'm going to show you guys what it looks like at the end product they do a really good job you guys of uh but it's uh yeah we'll show you again yeah. and the line goes right to the front it was quite a daunting task you guys but i got it done with a scissor lift so it can be done and look at that now i just gotta go and make sure everything while the car is running that everything's not leaking and don't forget to plug in that coupling that we unplugged in the beginning of the video all right, so I'm in the process of just uh, topping up the transmission fluid right now. Uh, I'll put the uh, link up top here. GT Content does a really fantastic job on describing how to uh, refill the transmission fluid or topping up your fluids. Uh, so check it out and uh, yeah, it's pretty in depth, you guys. So it's pretty much all done, you guys. There's no leaking or anything. Double checked, triple checked. And the final stages is the uh, Cutting the uh, inlet holes, which is pretty nice now. Just a fantastic job, you guys done, done. And uh, that's pretty much it. Hope you guys enjoyed the vlog. Don't forget to subscribe. See you guys next time. See ya. Uh...